record our session here and see how far it went. So I'm recording us right now. If I record, let's say, a 30 or 45 or an hour long lecture, can I upload that and embed it? And can you download it or play it without any issues? And I don't know the answer to that. I'm not a, I'm not a techie. But I think because I up upload it to YouTube um, rather than the JCC server, it should be able to handle that, but I've never done it. So I'm going to try to record like a half hour YouTube or a half hour Zoom thing. I'll upload it, see how that works. And so that might be another option. The advantage of doing Zoom, of course, is that you guys can ask questions as I'm talking, as if we were like in class, you know? So that's sort of what I was wanted, wanted to let you guys kind of know my thinking. Do we do labs this way too? Uh, we certainly could do labs this way too, although I'm still trying to get a sense of how the labs are going to run. It, it's going to be a little more independent in terms of like you guys looking at, for example, the bones you know, the Monday group was a couple of weeks behind the Wednesday group, right? So mm -hmm. I've already gone through all of the bone exercises with the Wednesday group. They were gonna do their practical last um, uh, week, but that of course got canceled. Um, but to answer your question, Joseph, yeah, we, we certainly could, could you know, do this sort of thing for lab, um, but a lot of that's gonna be more, you know, like learn the bones, fill in some of those diagrams that I think I sent you some information on the other day. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm here to help you guys in any way I can. So I'm open to suggestions. I've not done this ever. So, so you know, um, I'm certainly open to ideas too. Um, I don't have a skeleton here to show you the bone, so I can't do that. I don't have any of the models, although we could pull up diagrams and talk about all that. that that's great. I think that's a, a good way to do some of the labs. We could do that too. Um, my, my initial thinking is um, I would like to get the two labs sort of more in sync with one another. Remember the Wednesday group was two weeks before the Monday group because of Martin Luther King Day. Um, we had the uh, President's Day weekend. That threw the Monday group way behind. And I think it's going to be easier for everybody if we kind of give the Monday group some time to catch up a little, and then we all proceed as a, as a class, in other words, the two lab sections sorted together for the duration of the, of the semester. So that's, that's kind of my, my thinking at this point. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, what can, um, what about the practical? What can we expect, like, um, because we missed it, is that going to be coming up in the foreseeable future? Uh, I think what I would like to, to do, and I'll give you guys more information in terms of dates and things um, in the next, I'd say by Monday or Tuesday. The practical um, will basically be a big quiz, like we've always said. And rather than having models at stations, um, you know, you're going to see more diagrams on this online practical. Um, so it'll be very, very similar in terms of the questions as the first practical was, but because I can't ask uh, station questions, I'm going to have to rely on diagrams, uh, identify this bone, um, you know, that kind of thing. And, and maybe I would give you a, a multiple choice question for, for that, because I can't give you a word bank like I typically do, although I guess I could do that. But um, I'm thinking maybe more multiple choice sort of questions would, would be sufficient. Uh, okay, that sounds doable. That's my initial thinking. Okay. How about other comments or questions anybody has? So the only thing that was due this week was just the um, like the Monday groups, like lab quiz was the only thing that was due this week. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Yep. And, and then, uh, Amelia, as long as you're talking about that, remember the, the next lab quiz, which I think is number five, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
that we said was going to be on, I think, Mon let's say Monday. Or I, I could go back and look at my emails. Um, I just got a notification that you have unlimited minutes for us to do this. Oh, I, I just heard a little flip too. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm sure they're just extending it, which is really good. Wonderful. Um, does anybody remember what I told you about the fifth lab quiz next week? I know I gave you a, a, a day. I think it's on Monday. Monday. Okay. And did I indicate that, that probably the 10 to 2 time bracket like I did for the other? 12, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so we'll, he, we'll adhere to that fifth lab quiz for the Monday group um, for this coming Monday. And, and then I think everybody will be in sync other than the Monday group has not yet done the joint exercise, nor have they seen the knee replacement video, which the Wednesday group did. I can't really show you the knee replacement because that requires, you know, half-inch tape player, and that's just not going to work. So we'll we'll have to forego the knee replacement video, Monday people. But there's just a very short exercise 18 um, that would would have been scheduled that that next week. I don't know if you if you check out your schedule, your syllabus, it's it's on there. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not, but. The quiz on Monday's over these exercises, right? 15, 16, and 17. And then ordinarily would have we would have followed that up with the joint structure and movements exercise. And then we would have had the practical. So I am sort of thinking, and I and I need to really formulate this more formally, I guess, in the next couple of days, is that we will assign that or have that um, practical. Um, certainly before we start our spring vacation. I do want to give you time to study that and prepare for that. So we still are getting a spring break, <laughs> like even though we've been. Well, you know, my plan is not to, uh, I mean, I'm not going to have class. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think you guys need a break, right? That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be, you know, doing some schoolwork or whatever. You, you, you got to adjust for that, obviously. But yeah, technically, spring break still spring break. Hi, Tiffany. How about other questions? <laughs> Comments? Are we um, going to be doing lecture quizzes online, like in the same way that we're doing the lab quizzes? Say that one more time. Are we going to be doing the lecture quizzes online the same as we would do the lab quizzes? I think I told you guys that we were going to forego the remaining lecture quizzes. Didn't I tell you that? I'm sorry, I must have missed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty sure I wrote that mm -hmm. down, sent you guys an email on that. Um, you know, the advantage of the lecture quizzes is it really forced you to keep up. And, and I think I asked you that question a couple months ago and I said, you know, how do you guys think of the lecture quizzes? And a lot of you said, I like them because it forces me to keep up and, and, it, and it obviously does. Um, uh, I'm gonna just ask you to keep up on the lecture material, reviewing it and so forth in preparation for the lecture exams. We'll still do the lecture um, or the, the lab quizzes, 
we don't have a whole lot of those really left to go after the practical. Um, so that's kind of how I think I'd like to do that. Can we still do the um, the extra credit paper? Absolutely. Okay. That has not changed, right? And oh, another thing I was going to say, you know, I usually had review after lecture on Mondays and Wednesdays from 2.40 to 3.05. That was the formal date and time. Um, that's kind of going out the window a little bit. I still would like to do review, um, but open it up to everybody, even with, you know, whether you're signed up for it or not. Um, and so, you know, before we get close to an exam, before we get close to a practical or whatever, um, we can just say, you know, hey, let's, I'll, I'll open up a meeting, um, you know, on a Wednesday at noon or two or 10 or whatever. I know that not everybody's going to be able to make that because some of you have, you know, kids at home or you're, you're working odd hours or what have you. So I certainly get that, you know, your whole life is getting thrown into disarray. But um, I'm certainly happy to, to try to do any reviews and that kind of thing. I'm just looking over in the chat list and what people might have been writing here. Um, Michaela writes, will we be able to see our quizzes after they've been graded? Um, I don't know yeah. how. To... It is the quiz. I'm so confused. Say it again. Sit down on the roller chair. Um, I don't know how I can show you your individual quiz grades. Um, sort of like even the exams until after we get together. I, I, I will certainly save all that stuff. Um, but that's the downside of this online. Although, no, let me, let me take that back. I think with Blackboard, mm -hmm. you are able to look at the answers. Um, I'm just thinking back to what I, when I set that up. So they, I'll take that back. You, you can see your quizzes and any exams posted on Blackboard. Um, I think what I did was I set the control to give you access to your quiz I, I'm, I gotta go back and look, but I think it was today. I'm getting the microbiology class mixed up with you guys now. But anyway, I will, I will set up any and all future quizzes or exams so that you have access to your quiz, you know, what you got right, what you got wrong, um, like a day or two after you take it. Did you get that, Michaela? Okay, great. Yes, yes, you can see those quizzes and, and exams. And, uh, and you're right, Samuel, the Blackboard core, uh, gradebook, um, I have to, let's see, no, it'll automatically put those in, I think, since I'm using Blackboard. I, when I was doing the old fashioned method of giving you the quiz, I had to put them in manually. So I think they're gonna go in automatically, although I gotta mm -hmm. double check on that. Um, do keep in mind, guys, that because we are eliminating the remaining lecture quizzes, that the grading schematic is going to change a little bit. And I, I think I may have sent out, did you guys get an email from me regarding the new grade point spread? Or not? No. no. Okay, then I, I did it for the microbiology class. I know I did it to one of the two. So um, I will make a note to myself to, to um, edit the grading calculations. It's not gonna significantly change it, 
But again, because we're, we're not doing any more lecture quizzes, they will alter it a bit. But the, the same number of lab exams, quizzes, practicals, extra credits, all that stays the same. So it's just going to alter it just a tad. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, see what people are texting here. Um, so the only quiz that students took this week was the Monday group took quiz number four. And next Monday, the Monday group is going to take quiz number five lab quiz number five. That will bring everybody up to speed, will be at the same point for both Monday and Wednesday labs. And then we can talk about taking the lab practical to both Monday and Wednesday labs. And that will, that will likely be not this coming week, but the following week, we have Monday and Tuesday before we start our spring break, I think on Wednesday the 1st. Anybody got a calendar handy? Yeah. Okay. Because you don't want that practical hanging over your head over the break. You want to just enjoy as best you can, right, the break. So let's try to get that practical done before the break. That's my, that's my goal. Um, Michaela says she never got an email. Uh, well, you should have. So Janelle is writing, so with the readings in the book, where are we supposed to be at? Still bones and joints. Okay, great question. So I assume you are talking about the textbook, not the lab book. No? Let me talk about lecture. In terms of lecture, we are in the muscular system. So I will be posting in the next couple days. I'm going to try this voiceover PowerPoint. And we'll we'll pick up where we left pick up where we left off, which I think was neuromuscular junction on page two ninety seven of the textbook, section nine point two. That's we're gonna we're gonna start there, and then we'll see how far, you know, um, that lecture goes. But like the bones, we won't be going over specific uh, muscles and identifying muscles for lecture. That's going to be uh, uh, in lab in another couple of weeks. So we, we really only have, in actuality, um, like less than 10, well, 10, 12 pages of chapter 9 to do. And then we'll be done with the muscular system in lecture. And then we're moving on, I think, to... Uh, is it respiratory system? Look at my syllabus. Yes, that's chapter 19. We jump from chapter 9 to chapter 19. So if you're one to read ahead, um, you, cer you certainly should be looking at the rest of chapter 9 that we're going to be posting a, a voiceover PowerPoint on. Um, but you can re start reading ahead in chapter 19 on respiratory as well. Um, Morgan asks, do we uh, email you our extra credit papers? Um, I think that's probably going to be the best way, although as I think more about this, you're going to have to also include your sources that you used. If you look in the syllabus, it indicates here the need to include highlighted mm -hmm. sections of any sources use so that I can make sure you just didn't download a paper. 
Not that you would ever do that. I, know. I don't know if you know anything about Google Docs, but um, another one of my professors like has a folder that we put all of our information in. So like the sources, the bibliography, or the citations and everything. Hmm. Maybe that would be an option. Okay, now you tell me how hard it's going to be to disseminate that information to 22 students. Uh, I mean, it's actually an online course, so I could look, go back and see how she did it at the beginning of the semester. So I like, I, it was online prior. Yeah, I, I, I have used Google Docs a little bit. Um, what, what I'm finding in the last couple of days with this whole online thing is trying to efficiently get the information out to you guys. Um, and even when I do that, people are still confused sometimes. So I'm trying to minimize the confusion, but I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I, I truly do. Um, is that going to be any easier than sending the paper with the documentation in a folder and just, you know, mailing it? To me at home, I, and I know that's going to incur a little bit of cost, a couple bucks to send the packet. Um, let, let me think about that. I guess we got some time. I, I love the Google Docs idea. I just I, I worry about trying to tell everybody how to do that. Um, and some people have never done this online thing before, including myself. All right, let me continue to read what we've got on the chat here. Um, okay, so Janelle, Janelle was asking about the textbook. Um, tell you what, let, let me talk to our IT guru, Dr. Scrabbit, and see what his thoughts are in terms of the extra credit paper and the sources and all that stuff. Okay, so let me, let me talk to him. If we can do this electronically, absolutely, but I want to make this an easy process. Otherwise, it's going to be, I just know what it's going to be like. <laughs> um, Melissa writes, uh, well, you guys can read it, right? Um, in terms of when we would go back, the college, as is everyone, is waiting to see how the next few weeks are going to play out. Because no one knows what another three weeks from now is going to look like. I personally think, and it's just my own opinion, I, I've not heard this from anybody, this is just my personal opinion, is that it's more than likely that we will continue in the online format for the rest of the semester. I question whether even summer school will be offered. That's just my own personal opinion. I'm not basing that on anything I've heard from any, any college official, it's just my opinion. So uh, it's a wait and see thing, right? We got to see what the incidence rate is of the, of the infection. Um, I will tell you that, again, from what I'm reading and seeing, the next two or three weeks are gonna be pretty critical uh, in terms of not just locally, but nationwide, how many cases, because you're starting, you're gonna to start to see cases doubling. If you watch the news, um, cases will start to skyrocket. Now, we're, you talk about, you hear about lowering the curve, the infection curve, Anybody, everybody know what I'm talking about? Yep. The incidence rate. If we lower that curve, then we don't inundate the healthcare system. And that's the main worry, is if we have all the hospital beds filled and all the ICU beds filled and all the ventilators used, and there's still people coming in, then people are gonna die because they don't have access to intensive care and, and the ventilators. And that's the worry. That's what you're seeing on the news today. The federal government it, you know, is, is not really stepping up. I'm not saying they, that they're not, they're not trying, but they didn't prepare for this. And how can a person prepare for this, I guess? But it's kind of chaotic from the healthcare point of view. It's interesting, but it's kind of scary. Um, so Samuel says, yeah, I, 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 you're exactly right. That exponential growth phase is the, is the steepest part of that curve. And I think we're, 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 coming to that now. Um, and that's the scary part. And the other thing that you guys have heard about this, um, they're telling, especially the younger folks who are getting off, you know, school now in spring break, they're not, they're not practicing uh, social separation. They're still in clusters on the beaches. They're, they're just not 
<clears throat> either I don't can't believe willfully, but this is going to be a major issue if if students, younger people, don't separate themselves. They're going to make things way way worse. So I just heard the one of the doctors on the daily press briefings uh, at the White House pleading, please, young people, you know, uh, do not congregate during spring break. And apparently some people are just not either listening or they're not paying attention to that or don't care. I don't know. It's just kind of crazy. Kaya says she heard that OGH had a confirmed case. That's interesting. I heard or read in the paper today in the Jamestown Post Journal that there were a couple people tested, um, 12 people tested in Chautauqua County, six were negative and they're waiting for the other six results. But as of the news last night, it was Chautauqua, Cataraugus, and I think some other county up toward Lake Ontario had not any, had any confirmed cases, but you know, that's gonna probably change soon. Yeah. Melissa, what do you mean conditions of best fit? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I saw that there was a case Seneca action up in Erie County was confirmed. I read that today too. who gets respirators and stuff, yeah. I know there's not as many respirators or, or, or those surgical masks that they need. Yeah, it's really scary. And you all have heard yesterday how uh, California is basically um, adopted the uh, shelter in place thing, the whole state. Yeah, right, not man. just San Francisco. And I tell you, depending upon what New York City does, it's in Cuomo seems to be, New York and California are kind of the progressive states in that sense. And again, my own personal opinion, I have nothing to base this on other than my own personal opinion. It wouldn't surprise me if it came to that here. I hope not, but get out and buy that toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Walmart the other day just to grab a few items before class or before uh, I guess classes have been canceled but I went into work last week and the whole aisle toilet paper paper towels empty you've heard about that I'm sure I heard on the anyway. radio this morning Costco decided they're not taking refund or um, they're not taking products back for things that are being hoarded like toilet paper oh Interesting. Yeah, like the five closest stores to me, like I can't, couldn't buy toilet paper if I wanted to right now. Like even just to get like a normal supply of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. I saw in the paper today that Weg Wegmans and Walmart are, are allowing senior citizens to come in and shop an hour before the stores open so that they can get some of these items. So talk to your grandparents. Have them stock up for you. <laughs> yeah. I think Dollar General is doing that too. At least the one near me is. That's what Tiffany just wrote. Yeah. I think that's really great. You know, if nothing else, this is showing us how we need to pull together and we can do that. We can all work together to help get everybody out, our neighbors. If you have any senior citizens in your neighborhood, you know, reach out to them. At least tell them if you're if you're running low on on groceries, give me a buzz. I'll go down and get something for you. You know, we 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 we'll, we will come out again, come out of this better people. I think for doing that sort of thing, and you know, you just feel good when you help somebody out. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else have any? Questions about. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, are we planning on using the Zoom next week at all for any of the classes? Or are you going to just be um, doing your voiceovers for the PowerPoints and Blackboard? I think what I'd like to try to do, and of course, I'd like to hear you guys, your, your input here too, 
I like to just try the narrated PowerPoint voiceover and just see how that goes and post that, let's say for the, for the remaining part of the muscular system chapter, let's say. And then you guys take a look at that and let me know how that went. <clears throat> um, I'm not opposed to using the Zoom thing in place of it. My only concern is if I record this, which I've been doing now for the last, I don't know how many minutes, if I can upload that and, and then embed it in, in Blackboard and then play it back without any trouble, then we can certainly we can certainly do this. In other words, those of us that want to get together to have class, we do that, we record it. Those that can't, obviously just check out the recording. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. You guys you guys would probably prefer the Zoom thing versus the voice over PowerPoint, I imagine. Is that true? Um, probably. Just your kind of intuitive gut reaction. It sounds easier to ask questions. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So Makayla and I were actually talking and I'm going to post a link on the chat to uh, my Facebook. If you guys want to like add me, I was thinking maybe we could make like a group face, like a Facebook group and then like try to like study and we can do like Zooms like outside of like Professor Ratterman so that maybe we can try to obtain the information better. So it's not just based on like what, when we're in class, so to say. I think that's a great idea. That's a, that's a super idea. Um, so, Juliana, you would set up the Facebook. Um, is it a you said a chat? It's like or? a group. So like it would be like a group page. So anyone like in the A and P classes can yeah. go on it, and we'll just post like the different like things coming up and all that stuff, and just try to keep everyone on the same page. Just yeah. because I know it's hard with emails and everything. Right. Um, is, is there an option for, for voice, voice chat on Facebook group pages? Um, there, well, there's like a live option. It's not like quite the same as this, but I mean, if we all have accounts, we can always log on and create our own chats too. I see. Uh -huh. So this like would be, this would be just more um, like real time texting or certainly I know you can Yeah, kind of like texting and notifications and like people can post it like different things that are helping yeah. them and yeah, like right. try to keep us all Yeah, yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, when when I teach the tropical biology class, we 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 open up a Facebook page for each of these courses that I've done and and the kids, you know, post all of their pictures so that we can all share pictures, which is great. So I, I do understand what you're saying about the group page. Um, but I tell you what, I'm going to let you kind of lead that charge. Sounds good. <laughs> you're going to be more tech literate about that. I mean, I could do it, but I'd have to play around with it. Yeah. And then I and mean, then, I like same thing. Like if you have a Facebook and you want to come into the group, that's a okay. Like if you want to post, that would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I can certainly do that. And I'd be happy to do that. Um, so you'd be like the administrator, basically. Is that what they call the whoever yeah. organizes it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Whatever I can do to help out, I obviously will do that. Um, I would just ask you guys, guys to continue, please, reading your emails and making note of dates and things. And <clears throat> it gets kind of confusing, I know. Um, and if there's questions, don't be afraid to ask. I have no problem responding individually, of course, to any questions you've got. Um, I want to be the most efficient in getting the, the information out to you. Um, this seems to be a real good platform to do that with. I, I just, I love the real time interaction that, we, that we're doing here. This is really great. So Juliana has posted her Facebook. Uh, page there. So guys, check that out. Um, Juliana, you can also go, of course, into Blackboard and email 
and and send a note out to the entire class, right? In front yeah. of them because yeah, we I only do that too. That might be a good way to do it because I think right now we've got 16 people, which is excellent. I'm so happy so many people stopped. We've got um, how many people in class here? I think we're like, I don't know, somewhere in the 30 range, maybe a little less than that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the, I think the Zoom is just, I really like it. And you can Zoom from your phone too, if you're, if you're, at somebody else's house or your, I don't know, wherever uh, you got connection, you can you can zoom with your phone, which is nice. Yeah, Kaya makes a really good suggestion about posting the screenshot of the emails. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. Um, everybody should be getting those emails um, because what I've done is I go to the course, the lecture course shell, which everybody's in, right? And I go to email and I, I send it out to everybody that's on that roster. Um, of course, with the, the Monday and Wednesday lab groups, I posted the Monday lab quiz only in the Monday lab course shell. The Wednesday people didn't need to know about that. They're already done with quizzes four and five. So I will continue to use the lecture course shell to communicate to everybody. But of course, if I need to go to specific lab sections and post stuff like quizzes, you know, that's where I'll put that stuff. It just kind of logically makes sense to do that, I think. Anybody else have any thoughts, questions? Feel free um, how will the quizzes work from now on? Will we, will we send it over Blackboard or something? Will it be like a Blackboard test? Yes. Okay. That's what I'd like to do for the re remaining lab quizzes, for the lab practical, and for the lecture exams. Basically, all future um, um, assessment things, quizzes, exams, um, we'll have to do. I think I think it'd be best to do over Blackboard. Will labs just be reading now? The labs will be mostly uh, reading the exercises, labeling the diagrams. Um, okay. well, another thing that I just thought of was you guys um, used to go in lab and then check your answers, right, for the lab reports in the back of each exercise in those binders. So I'm going to talk to Deb, Deb Fornis, our lab technician, to see if she can scan those answer keys and then I can upload those so you guys can check your answers. Cool. That'd be nice. Yeah. I was going to do that and I forgot. And um, what I will do, because not everybody uh, in the course is here, I will send out an email that will give you guys sort of an overview of how I see the rest of this course panning out, both lecture and lab, um, and how we're going to do that. I haven't quite figured out how to do the Zoom meetings, whether that should be like uh, twice a week or um, on an as-needed basis kind of thing. Um, let, let me think about that. But I would I would assume you guys would like to meet a couple of times a week, maybe, huh? Except for maybe over the break. I think so. Okay. Yeah. So that would be sort of like our quote-unquote review session or we can just chat about other things as well. Um, maybe maybe what I'll try to do, and again, I need to think about this, 
is like if we did review, let's just say on a Monday morning and a Wednesday afternoon so that somebody who couldn't come to the Monday morning could do the afternoon and Wednesday just to try to reach as many students as, as I can. I don't know, I'm just thinking more about this. Because if we lock in on a certain time date, that might restrict some students just all the time. I mean, I mean, to be perfectly honest, um, I could even do a weekend thing if people are going to be. If that's a better day, well, let me let me just think about that. Or if you guys have thoughts, share that with me too. So just to kind of recap, I guess what I would do if I were you is I would be um, gearing up for that lab quiz next Monday. Okay, Monday morning, Monday morning lab people. And just go through that handout that I gave you of the structures of the various bones um, and, and be familiar with their locations, just like we did the preceding week with the skull, right, and the skeleton. And I know it's not fun or easy to do, but you just, you got to kind of take your time and look at those diagrams in the textbook. You can also print off the unlabeled diagrams. I sent you an email about that right in the content section of the lecture course. There's a bunch of unlabeled diagrams for bones and muscles and blood vessels. So concentrate on the bones. Try to gear up for that quiz because for the practical, you're going to need to know the bones, right? Um, in fact, not just the bones for the appendicular skeleton, but also the axial. And then um, We'll also be including the joint exercise on that lab practical coming up in another week and a half. And the integumentary system was also included in this next practical. So again, refer to the syllabus. We're talking about integumentary system all the way down through joints, basically for practical number two. The quiz, however, on Monday is not, good, is not going to include joints, uh, okay? It'll just include 15, 16, and 17. Does that make sense? Other questions, things I'm forgetting to tell you. Are we still pretty much going to be following along with the original schedule then? Um, the lab schedule is going to be adjusted a little bit so, so we can bring both labs into sync. Okay, so the, the Wednesday folks, you're kind of in a holding pattern to let Monday catch up. Okay, that makes sense? Okay. In lecture, we're all on the same page in terms of we've gotten through part of the muscular system at chapter number nine, and we'll pick up where we left off with a voiceover PowerPoint that I'll post um, with the idea that we'll see how that works, how you like it. And if you prefer to go on to Zoom and I can record with no trouble a 75 minute or whatever long lecture, then we can go the Zoom route. You tell me what you guys, you know, how, how you like it. But for the first one, I'll do a voiceover PowerPoint because I'd like to kind of see how that goes. I'm not going to do both. I'll do one or the other. Either way, it's going to be recorded. So you can go back and listen to me again. How painful is that? Okay, one last chance to share thoughts, questions before we conclude. Yes, Lorna, I'm going to definitely do that. That's on my to-do list. And also re redo the grade schematic to make it as clear as I can. Yep. And if I'm being unclear or if I'm not including something, just, just tell me. Because again, I, I, I'm trying to do both micro and you guys and sometimes it gets muddled in my mind as to what I did for one group and I didn't do for the other. I'm trying to be consistent but it's two different courses and the technology is 
is uh, also a learning curve. Tiffany says the voiceover may be easier because I really don't have service at home. Well, Tiffany, um, when we do the Zoom thing like we're doing now, I can record that, okay? So you will be able to, to get access to the recorded Zoom just like you would the recorded voiceovers. If you don't have service, you can't get anything. Does that make sense, Tiffany? Shake your head up and down if you can hear me. Okay. <laughs> you got your thing, your microphone uh, muted. You can talk or don't you have a microphone? I have one, but my two-year-old's running around screaming. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> so I'm like, limit the background noise. Oh, okay. I figured. What do, what do you have? Do you have like a, a 1962 camera? It's like, I can hardly see you. Um, it's just the webcam on my phone. Uh, oh, I'm hiding in my bedroom. Oh, gotcha. All right. I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. But it's it's not as <laughs> it's not as good as uh, Lauren's got a really good camera on hers. I think she's like she's in the other room. The college gave me. And a, it, you know, it very well could be my service too, because. Well, it's it's keeping up pretty good, though. You know, I bet a lot of these uh, internet providers are stressed to the max in terms of the the amount of information going back and forth. Yeah, and I live in an area where Spectrum doesn't come up the road, so I couldn't even get the internet through Spectrum if I wanted to. It's been crazy. <laughs> I was talking to a micro student before you guys, and we had a meeting scheduled at 10. And she said, um, well, she didn't log on at 10. And I was kind of surprised. So I called her and she said, I lost internet this morning. She lives in Bolivar. So I'm saying, well, I hope it's just a weather related thing. Um, she just got inundated with assignments for her kids. So she's stressing out about making sure the kids are getting educated, right? She's the, doing all this teaching at home now herself and plus the, the micro class. So she's a little stressed out like a lot of people are. Yeah, Portville went to um, basic paper for seventh and eighth graders. So that's a lot easier for me <laughs> so they aren't taking my computer for schooling. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're considering going to buy another laptop because we have two kids. So between my school and theirs, it's like insane. Yeah, yeah. So Kaya says she li she lives in the middle of nowhere and has to use a hotspot. Does that mean you got to like run to the corner dollar store to talk or what? Kaya, where do you live? Lauren, you got to learn how to control your camera. It's moving all over the place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love the light, though. It's great. I need to get one of those. <laughs> it's windows. <laughs> My windows. Oh, too bright? Mm-hmm. Oh. Harrison Valley, PA. Is that near Duke Center? I know where Duke Center is. That's in the middle of nowhere, too. Harrison Valley. I got to look that up. Okay, guys. Well, I won't keep you. I know you've got things to do. It's been really, really great chatting. I hope everybody's being safe and staying safe. And I appreciate, really, you taking the time to log on. This is really, really good. All right. So, uh, I'll continue to be in communication and um, we'll, we'll connect again soon. How's that? Sounds good. Sounds nice. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. You bet. See you later.